Hi, second graders. Um, today we have looked at Kehinde Wiley's portraits for um, his backgrounds in terms of their vibrancy, their color scheme, um, and their consistency. So when we used printmaking in our backgrounds, um, it was very easy to remain consistent because we were printing, which allows for that um, ease of repetition and um, similarity of shapes. But now you're gonna be using some drawing tools today um, so that in our portrait, when we have our background, we have that consistent background. So when you're adding um, color to your work today, we're going to think of a couple things. Consistency and our color scheme that we chose. So we did choose a color scheme, um, and we want to stick to that. So the first thing you can look at for consistency is um, if your prints were not fully consistent, you can go in as the artist now and complete these things. So maybe your lines were a little wonky, or you want to make sure that they're all even. Because sometimes in printmaking, we have those imperfections. And with your drawing tools, you can edit those and make them a little bit more um, complete with a drawing tool. So I'm going into all these little orange radial designs and fixing the imperfections or the parts where it didn't fully print. Um, and you can do that for any color. So now I have my blue out and I'm looking at these blue areas. If you're happy with an imperfection, you can leave it. That's, like I said before, some of the beauty of printmaking. But um, if you want it to, something really didn't work out for you and you were printing, you can fix it now too. All right, so I think I'm happy with the rest of the imperfections now that it's pretty even keel around there. There we go. All right, so now I have that complete. And now I'm going to think about um, anything else I want to add with oil pastel, I want to do now. For example, maybe I get out this bright blue and I add a blue circle here. But if I add a blue circle here to be consistent in terms of my pattern, I'm going to add it to every single one. So you can think of things that you want to see in your pattern that aren't there yet, but you still want to remain consistent. So it is a little harder with drawing to remain consistent in your circle, but you can follow the guidelines you already had. Um, the other thing that we can do after that um, is we can utilize our um, soft pastels to fill things in as well. Now, be careful with the soft pastels because um, remember from using them before that they can smear and get all over the place. So if you want these to be um, used in your work, like I'm just filling in these circles here, um, it's not going to mix well with the oil pastel. So they're two completely different materials, so you want to use those separately. Um, so if I wanted to kind of blend this circle in, I'll show you an example, with the oil pastel, it would work a little bit differently. So I'm just gonna show you what this looks like first. And I can smudge each one individually. You never wanna smudge pastel like this because it'll mix things that you didn't wanna mix. Now, that was an example of just filling something in with color blending with my pastel. But had I wanted to um, do a color blend with my oil pastel in here, that would have been a little bit different. So you can see the differences between the materials. This oil pastel can make more of a blend. So now I'm blending that yellow and blue into a green here, which is totally different thing. So the materials will act differently. So think about what you'd like to use them for. The oil pastel is better for drawing and the soft pastel is better for filling bigger areas. Um, but once you fill it in, you still have to kind of smear it and make sure it's finished. So if I was to fill in a few of these, I could turn it on its side and start filling them in. But you need to think of the color scheme that you have and which colors for the materials work better. And also think of um, how the materials are interacting with each other. So the soft pastel goes over anything, but it's not going to mix well with other materials. But the oil pastel, you can blend with itself. And you can use it for really hard lines, like fixing things. Um, so you might go all oil pastel, 
or you might find that you enjoy the colors in the soft pastels more, or you might decide that you want to do some more color blending with the soft pastels. I'll show you one more example of that. For example, if I chose that I wanted these green things I just did to have a hint of this uh, darker green on the outside edge, then I could now blend that in. So those two would blend just like we did in the background. So that's getting really meticulous or really into it. But um, just note that the materials work in different ways. So this one is for blending and smudging still and bright colors um, and the soft pastel. I mean, the oil pastel that looks like this is better for um, hard lines, not, not as much for filling. So if you're doing these hard lines like this, I would use oil pastel so that you can have that line that stays and you're not smudging it everywhere. And if you have something to fill in with a bright color, you might want to try the soft pastel again. Um, all right. So the last thing I would probably think about is if I want to fill in any of these triangles, so I could kind of use the soft pastel to fill in these blue triangles, and I could smudge that in. That just kind of changed the pink color. All right, so that's the last detail, and um, enjoy your um, drawing time. Remember to remain consistent, so if you do something to one part of the pattern, you want it to repeat. Um, and I hope you have a wonderful um, drawing day. Have a great art class.